This study is about the second coming. It is no fairy tale. One day you can be free from all the hurt, hunger, loneliness, crime, and chaos infecting the world today. Doesn't that sound wonderful? But it's not going to be some charismatic world leader who is going to deliver you. No. Your deliverer is far superior. Jesus is coming soon. But there are a lot of misconceptions regarding how he's coming back. So take a few minutes to understand what the Bible really says about the second coming. So you won't be left behind. I'm going to repeat that. So you won't be left behind. That's so important. Those words are so important. This is question three and four on our misconceptions about the second coming and the rapture. Question three. When will Christ set up his kingdom on the earth? And let's go over what the lessons say. Then we'll kind of digest it as we go. After the great 1,000 year period of Revelation 20, this millennium begins at the second coming. When Jesus takes the righteous from the earth to heaven to live and reign with him a thousand years. Revelation 20 and 4. At the close of the thousand years, the holy city, the new Jerusalem, Revelation 21 and 2, comes down from heaven to the earth with all the saints. Zechariah 14, 1 and 5. And the wicked dead of all ages are raised to life. Revelation 20 and 5. They surround the city to capture it. Revelation 20 and 9. But fire comes down from out of heaven and devours them. This fire purifies the earth, burns up all traces of sin. Second Peter 3.10, Malachi 4.3 Then God creates a new earth. Second Peter 3.13, Isaiah 65.17, Revelation 21 and 1 And gives it to the righteous. And God himself will be with them and be their God. So what do we have here? The millennial starts at the second coming. The thousand year clock starts ticking when Jesus comes and takes all the righteous back to heaven. Have that picture. Then when the thousand years end, the holy city, the holy city, it says at the close of the thousand years, the holy city, the new Jerusalem, comes down from heaven to earth with all the saints. They are inside the city, or maybe we are coming down on a cloud. I don't know. It says, with all the saints. And the wicked dead of all ages are now raised. So, the second coming starts it, and when a thousand years are over, the city comes back, the new Jerusalem comes to the earth. So, now the thousand years is up. So, why did God raise all these wicked people? So that they can receive their punishment. And the Bible, the lesson clearly states here, as well as the Bible, that fire comes down from heaven and purifies the earth and burns up all traces of sin. There is nothing left. There is no eternally burning hell where people are suffering for eons for something they did. They only lived 60, 70, 80 years. God is a just God. This makes it clear that the kingdom of God is set up when the thousand years are over, the the earth is redone, is purified. God creates a new earth with the new Jerusalem. And the saints of God possess this new Jerusalem. This is the importance of what happens in the millennial period. The thousand years we spend, as it says here, we spend in heaven with Christ for a thousand years. Then we come back. At the end of the thousand years. Then and only then is the earth made livable for the saints of God. That is so important to understand. This is a continuation of question three. When Christ sets up his kingdom on earth. And it goes on to say here about the perfect, holy, happy beings. Restored restored once again to the perfect image of God will at last be at home in a sinless and spotless world as God originally planned. This is what the thousand years is all about. It's such a wonderful understanding and love and the promises of God fulfilled to restore to us that which was lost by sin. 
Question 4. Why don't we hear more preaching and teaching today regarding Christ's second coming? That is a really good question. The devil is responsible. I like how the lesson puts it. He well knows that the second coming is the blessed hope, Titus 2, 13, of the Christian. And that once understood, I'm going to read that again. Once understood, especially understood correctly, it changes the lives of men and women and leads them to take a personal, active part in spreading that good news to others. This infuriates Satan. So he so he influences those who have a form of godliness, Second Timothy 3, 5, to scoff, saying, Where is the promise of his coming? Excuse me. For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning. Second Peter 3, verse 3 and 4. Those who deny or make light of Christ's second advent as a literal soon coming event are fulfilling Bible prophecy and doing the devil's service. I know many of us has, have heard many ideas on the second coming and have myself coming from an unchurched environment. I heard many things before I finally settled on where I am today. But the devil works hard at keeping people from not understanding. Because if you understand the truth that we have learned in this lesson about the second coming, you're going to live your life differently. If you think you got a second chance, you ain't gonna work at it because you think, oh, I got it. I ain't got to get it right right now. I got, I got the chance to do it in them seven years, you know, about the secret rapture. Or if you believe in reincarnation, you figure you got a bunch of lives to live to to get it right. But if you have a right understanding of the second coming and you realize you have no second chance, you gonna live differently. This is the lesson study information. You will find this lesson on the AmazingFacts.org website. The title of the lesson on their website. If you type this in their search, you will find it. Ultimate Deliverance. And it is a 15-question lesson, and there are some additional materials that go with the lesson.